What's an asset light business and why is it a great investment? Rate cuts, inflation and the czar. PGM stocks, strong bounce off oversold. Palladium could get interesting. SA consumer confidence, five-year highs, but still negative. Utterance results, Finbond and Outfest IPO. This is JC Direct, episode 603 for 19th September, recorded 3 p.m. on the 18th. My name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by Just One Lap. Let's head first to the big story. Uh, tonight, I'm recording Wednesday, but uh, by the time you listen to this, quite possibly, we have had the Fed rate decision. Thursday, 3 o'clock, is our local rate decision. And Wednesday morning saw August CPI 4.4%. I was chatting with Johan Els, uh, he's chief economist at Old Mutual, and asking him, and he's talking around a possible 3.5% inflation print for October. And that starts to get completely wild. What we've got here is our prime rate, 11.75, our inflation, 4.4. So the difference is the real rate in a sense. And apart from sort of early 2000s when we had a current currency crisis and 2008 when we had a financial crisis, this is the biggest gap. We need cuts. How much are we going to see cuts by? I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't know. The, 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 the experts, economists, are saying the U.S. would do a quarter of a percent, but the Fed futures market is saying half a percent. Local consensus is a quarter percent. I think locally we can absolutely do half a percent. Again, the market says quarter now and half in November. Nice, but I mean, TikTok guys, come on, look at this chart here. Uh, and in the U.S., Worries that half a percent might spook the market. We'll know soon enough, but our rates have been at these levels for a year and a half. It's been a very, very long time. And what we are seeing as a result of is interesting in the uh, RAND is moving stronger. Now, we've been bullish on the RAND for some time now, so it's not necessarily a surprise, but certainly our RAND has been coming nicely stronger uh, and could well continue. I mean, immediate targets, having uh, gone through the the 1850, we had a bit there. Our next target is potentially down in those sort of sub-17 levels. Not in a hurry, but I see no reason why we can't get to there perhaps sooner rather than later. So Rand certainly looking pretty in this regard. I think we're going to see more strength. I do think S&Ps at all-time highs, top 40 just off all-time highs, as is the NASDAQ. I do think with the rate cuts, we're going to see a bit of a short-term sell-off. Not because the world is panicking, but because this is very much a buy the rumor, sell the, new, sell the fact. And, and, and the fact will be we've got the cuts and everyone's been buying into it. We will continue to rally. We saw strong consumer uh, data out of the U.S. as well. As I said, our consumer, is at, our consumer confidence is at five-year highs, but still negative. Went from minus 10 to minus 5. It's moving in the right direction. Next week is six months of no electricity, 4.4% inflation. Things are just looking a whole lot better in South Africa. And we know that story. And let's be clear, there's, lots of, you know, there's still lots that can, can go very, very wobbly and wrong. But for right now, things are looking good. And we are now finally at rate cuts. A quarter percent is about a 170 rand per million rand of bond. You can go and do the math. Uh, and decide, see how much extra money you're going to have. I made the point in a newsletter a couple of weeks ago, what you spend that extra money on is entirely up to you. We all know what the right things are, but you know what? Sometimes life gets in the way and you need something else, like maybe some fun or some bubbles or chuckles or something. But plan it. Because otherwise, it's going to come December and you're going to have all these uh, extra money that is just vanished. So plan to spend it on bubbles or chuckles or debt or whatever the case may be. And the same with the two pot, because otherwise money comes into our account and then we look around and it's gone. So make plans, sort of get a sense of where you want it to go and what you want to do with it. That's always the best idea. I know we hate budgeting, but that is the truth of it. Uh, we had... Platinum stocks uh, have a massive bounce Thursday, Friday last week. And the story is, is really quite simple. Uh, what we have got is a bounce of uh, very, very uh, oversold positions. And truthfully, the, some of the news coming out of Sabania, I'll take that as well, uh, where they're cutting back on palladium production. Platinum stocks still don't massively interest me. Uh, I did a podcast where I said, uh, was, it, it was, was it last week? I think it was last week, where I said, 
said, you know what, folks, uh, stay away from Anglo Platinum. There's trouble there. This Palladium chart could get interesting. It is, it's had a massive week. It's had an absolutely massive week. What was the low? The low was 892, uh, and the high is 1,010. It's currently a little below that. It's back at that resistance level, but it's pretty much been trading in for almost a year, since October of last year. If it can break that, then uh, 1,230 to perhaps as much as 1,360 is definitely on the cards. Now, our miners don't mine a lot of palladium in South Africa, but some of them, uh, Implat, Sabanya, both have that exposure offshore in uh, North America. That'll certainly help them. It won't be, so, you know, uh, Anglo Platinum, uh, Teresa, the, the others, um, uh, Northern, they've got some palladium, but they're mostly platinum mines. Palladium's mostly uh, Northern, uh, Northern America and Russia. But it still will bounce it. It absolutely still will bounce it. So that the platinum chart is of, of, of passing interest. I'll pull it up in a moment. This palladium chart is certainly looking interesting. Uh, platinum, and here's a fun thing. Palladium's actually up half a percent for the year, which uh, seems better than you think. And platinum's only down three quarters of a percent. Of course, we've now got that stronger rand as well, which is taking some shine off some stuff. But th this, this, pl this platinum chart is not any different to what it has been. I mean, that's three years sideways. I mean, pretty much since October of 2020, uh, approaching four years, it has been moving sideways. I don't, you know, 1100 odd is the upper side, 820 or so is the bottom side. No significant change happening there just yet is my sense. Is that coming through very loud or is it just my headphones are loud? Uh, if it's coming through very loud, apologies. Uh, so we've got events coming up. We've got a power hour tonight, 19 September, 5.30. I'm looking at psychology of markets. You know, you know markets are people. People are emotional. Therefore, it is a mess when the two kind of get together. We, so, you know, a lot of folks have said, no, I mean, my psychology of markets is fine. With respect, no, it's not. It just isn't. Anyway, so we've got that power hour, either webcast or in person here in Rosebank, uh, Johannesburg, the Standard Bank head office. We've got two events with ETFSA left. Uh, 3 October is Johannesburg and the webcast. And then 8 October is Durban. Uh, Narina Fisser, Mike Brown, Gareth Stoby will be talking around using ETFs and their new Balanced Foundation ETF code ETFSAB. And then we've got uh, the October power hour up 17 October, Adrian Civil. I have to say, I've known Adrian for some 25 years. I'll tell the story at the Power Hour on the 17th, how he uh, did a presentation, promised us a 10-bagger. It was only a 9-bagger. And young me was disappointed, which I know, silly. Anyway, Adrian Civil thinks about markets deeply as do many. But he also thinks about markets perhaps differently, I think, in many ways. Certainly my sense. And maybe that's because he's also a lecturer, he's a professor, uh, he's got a PhD. He, he's, he's, he's different in many senses from your traditional sort of, of, of folks out there, uh, CFAs and the like. It's going to be brilliant. You can get all of this and more information, just one lap.com slash events. So let's talk around asset light businesses. What are they? Well, exactly as they say in the sticker. So, you know, let's look at, for example, a, a bank. Lots of assets, right? Those assets are you've got to have money on the balance sheet in order to lend. You've also got lots of head offices and branches and ATMs, uh, a construction company, lots of assets, you know, a, a, a retailer, tons of assets. You might not own the stores, but you're having to rent them. Uh, you might, in the case of ShopRite, have your own central distribution and your own trucks. And then, of course, you've got all the inventories, all the baked beans and loaves of bread and uh, milk that you are then selling. Those are asset heavy businesses. An asset light business is a business which has pretty much no assets yet is able to operate. Just One Lap would be an example. What are the assets of Just One Lap? Well, I've got a fancy roadcaster mixing desk over there. I've got a fancy, uh, what is this? It's a MacBook Pro 14-inch M2. And that's it. Those are the only two assets of the business. There is some IP in there, absolutely. 600 plus shows of JC Direct is probably worth a couple of bucks, but it's very asset light. Why are they great? 
Well, because I haven't got all these fixed costs. And I've got a balance sheet that looks way better because on the asset side of the balance sheet, I don't have tons and tons of, of, of assets that I've then got to earn a return on. So let's say we've got uh, just one lap and let's say my, my assets on my balance sheet are, let's say they're 10,000 rand. Okay. And let's say I've got no liability. So therefore, the assets of the business are 10,000 and my equity is 10,000. And if I'm doing return on equity or return on assets, I'm basing it on that 10,000 number. Let's take a competitor who also has a whole lot of other assets as well, and they end up with 50,000. They've got five computers and five roadcasters. Their asset base and therefore equity, again, no debt, is 50,000. They've got a much higher bar in terms of return on equity. And that's just one measure. Return on assets is another, but you see what I'm saying about the attraction of these businesses. Let's use a real-world example. On the JSC, it would be Santova. What do they do? Well, they are logistics. You need to move something from A to B. You phone Santova. They'll put it on a train, a plane, a truck, a boat, or whatever you need it to go on to get it from A to B. But they don't own that train, the truck, the plane, or the boat. Whereas, for example, uh, Amazon does. So they've just got that software layer on top, asset light business. Uh, we could say the tech companies, such as, for example, Meta, very asset light. Yes, they've got data centers. Yes, they've got hundreds of 100,000 staff in a giant head office. But that's kind of like all they've got. Uh, Timu and Shine, it's why they are uh, you know, running it to, to, to the traditional retailers. Their business model is they don't manufacture stuff and they manufacture an order. So they go out to folks and say, right, we want uh, uh, laptop bags, right? Make us laptop bags for 14-inch laptops. Don't make them. Tell us so that you can and what sort of price and give us the specs. They get the specs. They put them on their, on their app or their website. You buy it, as does, say, 104 other people. They then go back to the manufacturer and say, cool, you want 104 of them and you've got seven days to deliver. That's asset light. All they've got is essentially an algo, an app, and that's pretty much it. So you can see why these are really, really great businesses and why they make great investments. And it was something which uh, uh, Prof Galloway said on the Pivot podcast this last week I was listening to. And he was talking particularly, I think it was Shane, maybe it was Timu, I forget which one, but around that asset light and how he only wants to invest into asset light businesses. And it does make me think, and I think there's a, a lot more digging from myself and, and, and yourselves in terms of what's available, what's out there. But I think there's, I think this is perhaps, you know, I'm not going to abandon asset heavy businesses, but I want to think more around that asset light. I want to think more around what businesses are truly asset light, what businesses such as Timu and Shane can really use it to their advantage, such as Santova. You know, as I said, they don't own any of those, 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 those assets. They just got the software which sits on top and puts other people's assets and plugs them all together. And I think there's something there. I, you know, intuitively, and I know I've chatted uh, with, with Santova and I've chatted with others about Santova, and I've always said, it's asset light. That's great. But I'd never really done all the sort of deep thinking about it. And I've got to say, I, I like the idea. I like the, the, the asset light nature of it, and it certainly is something that interests me. Let's get to some uh, local results. We're still in local results season, although it is a little bit uh, quieter, and I want to kick off with uh, our insurance. They, of course, are relatively new to our market, um, but results out on uh, Tuesday, and they were really, really good. Unfortunately, we can't look at a lot back in terms of, of historic data because there's just not enough really there. But a good set of numbers, another special dividend, albeit second in a row, which makes me think this isn't special. But uh, the, the point being, and Carmen Meploani made it to me on my show this morning, she was saying, They've got a dividend policy, and they're sticking to that. They've got extra money. It's going to be a special dividend. I get that. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. The stocks run fairly hard. I mean, if we go and pull up the chart, but before I do, I don't think we're going to get much in the terms of analysts' ratings. Uh, there are four people saying, hold, the upside target is 58, the stock is 55. This will be a Tuesday's close. It has, it has run very hard. Make absolutely no mistake about that. We can see it running hard. I like... I like short-term insurers generally. Why? Their ability to reprice. So the problem with a short-term insurance is big floods or fires or whatever the case may be comes along and just destroys a year's of profit. 
What do you do? At the end of the year, you just reprice the insurance. You say to everyone, hey, you know what? Your car insurance, house insurance, business insurance, it's going to cost more because they reprice every year. And you're like, well, yeah, but if our insurance does it, I'll move to Suntime. Trust me, Suntime's doing it as well. There might be nuances, but they're all doing it. I really like that ability to re reprice. Outsurance has got, uh, obviously, local. They've got Australia New Zealand. They set up Ireland. Ireland cost them $180 million in some setup fees. We can expect that to continue. But at this point in time, I, I'm liking the, the short-term insurers, and I quite like uh, outsurance. I don't have it. And I looked long and hard at it, and I really thought I should own some and then didn't buy it. Uh, and then when I sort of came back to it, it was kind of like not too late in a sense, I, I think. It was just really a case of, well, it's now run, and uh, I'd spent all my money elsewhere buying things like uh, Mr. Price and the Fashini Group and other SA Inks. Uh, let's come to a product which I wrote about for Just One Lap. You'll find this at com slash ETFs. Uh, we've got ETNs issued by FNB, over NVIDIA, Booking Holdings, uh, Eli Lilly, Palo Alto Networks, and many others, uh, Berkshire, Microsoft, etc. A couple of things about them. They trade on the JC in ZAR. They're ETNs. They can't go into a tax-free. They are also uh, fractional, so they start life at 10 rand, so they're not massively expensive in that regard. And you can have them either with or without the currency effect. The Quanto, Code ends in Q, there's no currency built in, and the, the compo ends in C, there's a currency impact as well. The reason I mention it is because I tweeted this today, and uh, folks were like, whoa, hang on, never seen this before. Why would you buy this instead of just buying it in the U.S.? Well, you know, NVIDIA at one point was an $1,100 stock, which is 20 plus thousand, and that might be too much for someone. You, you might not have you know, that sort of money. You might have 30000 and you can't buy one and a half. Here's your, your, your solution. It might be uh, I used it as a short-term hedge over the election period, still holding my NVIDIAs in that regard. You might have some money you don't want to offshore and externalize. You might have hit limits. They're not the perfect thing for everyone, but I think they're certainly worth having a look. And then uh, something which everyone is asking me about, so let me give you your answer. Altvest is coming to the JSC. They're currently on the Cape Town Stock Exchange. They're doing an IPO on Easy Equities. It uh, closes uh, at the 1st of October. Everyone's saying, am I taking it up? No. Look, firstly, I don't have an Easy Equities account, so I practically can't. Secondly, Altvest in of itself is interesting. They provide uh, uh, SME funding in a sense um, to, to SMEs, and some of those they will then flip. They've got a, a, a Bambino restaurant in Melville. Uh, they've got a, a, a lodge just next to the Kruger. Uh, they've got a, a couple of other debt instruments. But understand, so you've got Altfest at the top, and then you've got these preference shares underneath, which will be the A, B, C, D, etc. preference, which then give you link to those dividends and return. But understand what a preference share is. It's a lovely asset. But you don't get, we don't get the same, for example, we don't get the full results. We just get, hey, profit or loss. They're not required to publish that. So there's a lot less transparency. I love the idea. Now that they're going to come to the JSC, I will keep a very close eye on them. But at this point in time, I haven't invested. I have had a look. I've looked at the prospect prospectuses of all of the uh, 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 preference share listings. Um, sure, but not for me. I mean, just not for me. And then another one that has suddenly got everyone very interested, and hence I'm getting questions left, right, and center, is Fin bond. There's a there's a subsect of of Fin Twitter in South Africa who are out there and uh, uh, getting sort of into these small caps. And I, yeah, no worries, I own small caps. I love small caps too. Uh, we're not getting much information from here. Let's go have a look at the chart. So Fin bond does essentially very short term unsecured loans. Uh, I would call them payday loans in some cases. Folks don't necessarily like that because of the, the process of it. This was a stock. Let's zoom out uh, 10 years. You can see here all the hype uh, in 2019, uh, back there in 2015. At some point, they bought into a payday loan business in the U.S. just before payday loans got essentially not banned, but really, really clamped down on. The stocks uh, had a significant sell-off from its six-round highs in 2019. You can see that there was a seller at around the 50 cents. 
two things have got the world excited. First, a sense on what I think was 30 uh, no, uh, August, which said that there are talks with a shareholder that may impact the price. There's only really one talks you have with a shareholder. It's either they want seats on the board, in which case no worries, or they want to do a delisting of the company, or maybe take a big stake, a 30% stake from other shareholders. In other words, there is a possible delisting coming here. Everyone I see on Twitter is, says, I'm not selling. Well, okay, but I don't know if you remember, a delisting is a special resolution. You need 75%. That's why Bell is still listed. Then you've got, I think, 50 and, or 49, in fact, 50 and some change. You need 75%. There might be enough small holders to block it. They also have bought a business in the U.S. that is uh, by accounts. I haven't run the numbers. I am trusting people on Twitter, which is by accounts uh, about the same value as their current market cap on the JSC. And ergo, we get the entire South African operations for free. Uh, disclaimers galore here. Go and do your homework. Uh, the chart wasn't showing. Let's have a quick look at that chart. My bad. Um, you know what I need? I need a producer. So someone who can show these things. Ah, maybe I just need to work smart. Anyway, it's a pretty looking chart. What you have here is a, is a nice breakout. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're going to do it across there, there is your nice breakout. A come back and uh, retest. Uh, am I buying? Nope. Uh, should you buy? Uh, do your homework. I, I'm putting it out there because there's a ton of excitement around it, and a lot of folks are saying, hey, you know, what about this uh, 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 fin bond thing? So now I can just point them to this podcast. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JSC Limited. I'm never sure when that's going to end. A quick thing to end with, Larry Ellison, 80 years old, CEO of Oracle, founder of Oracle, now the second richest man in the world, to which everyone's like, Oracle? What do they do? Cloud services. Apparently, they're really big in AI, and it's been taking off. The stock's up 60% a year to date. I'm going to do more digging. I don't have time for it uh, today, but we'll come back and have a look at Larry Ellison and his, um, yeah, let's see what the whole Oracle story is. We'll leave that there for now. My name is Simon. We will chat again next week. Uh, remember all of our events, justonelap.com slash events. For more information, two power hours, two from ETFSA. As always, look after yourself if you can. Look after somebody else as well. And if you absolutely can, can, leave us a great review and a rating on your podcatcher of choice. Just helps folks spot us.